You know, unless she uh, is trying to bait me into doing all randoms with her. <laughs> Ooh, it looks like it's... Why not? I did it. I went two and two. Somehow. Looks like it might be the fawn cloud today. That was a hovered over a year. So yep, all right. We're going to be seeing Marth versus Cloud, two two sorties coming in on game one. A classic matchup, if ever there were one. All right, starting off fun, just getting comfy in the corner, charging up that limit, really making 13 be the one to force the issue here to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just kind of playing kind of relaxed so far, but 13 finally starting to get some hits in, but just as quickly getting kind of reversaled. Now, where do you stand on... Because, like, I think Lucina players think this matchup's dead even, which I can see. Do you think, you know, the advantages Marth has, and by extension the disadvantages, do you think that impacts this versus Cloud much? Because both characters want to space their aerials quite a bit. I do think that it can be a bit more advantaged. Uh, that being said, if Fawn wants to play the more passive game as she has been doing so far, you know, doesn't Ooh. matter how long your sword is if Fawn's on the other side of the stage. Now with Limit on deck, we'll see if we can get something started with it. All right, going for the Tomahawk Blade Beam, but instead it's going to be that Tipper uh, Neutral Air, 13 with the first blood. That got buffed. That didn't used to work that well. Out of shield pre patch. And Odie. Oh. Ooh. Back air almost taking it. 13 did save his jump. I'm surprised. That looked like uh, not the greatest DI. Okay, what's big? Mm. No punish. All right, 13 choosing to reset back at the ledge, but against, you know, Cloud with small battlefield platforms, that's a risky ledge trap to take, especially against Fawn. Okay, chop. Back on deck. Did that? Thir oh. 13 tried to parry the last hit, but got the timing wrong. Unfortunate. Is my guesstimation, anyway. Oh, I love the weight on the last hit Ooh, of the Dancing Blade. 13 that going deep. That almost was very bad news for Fawn. Ooh, I love these platform extensions coming out from 13. Still 0% on the board. 13 making Fawn work right now. Okay. Another limit on deck, but it might... No, okay, Fawn able to air dodge to the ledge. Okay, I like the fade back up there. However, 13 is quick to answer. Ooh. I'm surprised that missed. I definitely saw a backer come out. All right. Nice and easy. Just quick, clean, tipper, forward tilt. 13 now with only 50% on his second stock. Fawn's got a lot of work to make up. That forward air is so funny. All right, looking for another one of these ledge trap sequences. 13's been getting a lot of mileage out of ledge traps in this game okay, one already. Okay. Ooh, wanted an air dodge. That that might have killed actually. I kind of expected 13 to go for the suicide there with some sort of some sort of aerial off stage. I mean that also would have worked. Definitely not enough limit to, in the tank to make it back. All right, 13's been looking for a lot of roll, a tech roll ins, but Fawn has not been biting. Great parry, but the limit up B is not going to be the thing that takes it. Yeah, that's... Limit climb hazard's not as strong as you, not, as you might think it is, given the, like, intense zoom in. Yeah, it, the, the game really makes you think it's a cool move. Whoa! <laughs> Don't get chopped in the back. Uh oh another tipper Dude, just forward tilt. There's... Yeah, goodbye. That is the advantage of playing a very floaty sword like Marth. You can just, you can accompany so much space and with one swing just shut down most characters' recovery options. Yeah, just by occupying that space, it's like 13 could just react to any sort of jump or option with that quick forward air. Easy stuff for 13. And this is something like, like this is something I've praised Font for doing as well, but what I'm liking most about the set so far is both players like, both players do what I call movement with purpose. So it's not just like dash dancing, trying to make visual noise to, you know, to um, try and convey something. It's actually, you're do you're making a move on the stage, like you're moving your character and intending to do one or two things in doing so. 
and that leads to things like, you know, we, like we just saw, the fade out uh, edge guard for this, to close out game one. That was almost death. <laughs> that being said, though, while we're still talking about game one, Fawn is trying to make game two as fast as possible with this Bayonetta switch, getting some good bullet damage off stage 13. Oh, God. Saving the jump, though. Now, also, Bayo is a much lighter character than Cloud, so uh, Tippers are going to be hurting a lot more. Tippers are definitely going to be hurting a lot more, but Fawn's nice. going to have so much more advantage off stage. It's not just, oh, I got sneezed down off stage and now my jump is gone and I'm dead. You know, I found out very only very recently that, like, if Bayo's heal, if Bayo's heal slide is shielded, she can't do the follow-up kick. Yep. For some reason, that was knowledge not imparted to me for the longest time. And it's something that 13 will probably respond with in turn with, you know, many a Dolphin Slash, which we haven't seen, to be fair, much I'm, of this set. Honestly, it's still like muscle memory for me of just like, oh, my, sh my shield got heal oh. slid. I have to wait for the follow-up. Yeah, that's like, that was, that was a thing she could do in Smash 4, but not here. Yep. All right, 13 now with the potential edge guard sequence, looking for a down air, but not finding it. Like I was saying, Fawn's got so many more resources to use this match. You also just find that Bayo is much, much less edge guardable than your standard character. Good recovery to, like, above ledge, because otherwise you are getting caught. Ooh, I love this turnaround setup for the back air. Didn't quite what work out, though. What was that? That was... Interessante. Yeah, I'm going to say it right now. Please capture that so we can post analyze later. All right, 13 now on the board with a stock, but 140%. That's a lot of rage to be working with with tippers. One bad, uh, one bad read or one bad air dodge rather, and it could be lights out. Patch of Finn notwithstanding. All right, I like that 13 is now playing at this, like, ABK from ledge range uh, with the ledge traps. We saw him get a lot of ledge trap mileage in game uh, one. Uh, ooh. Wow, that was still active? That's crazy. Fox Mine like, oh, shit, you got those? Had to like save it. 13, unfortunately. She definitely was intending to, like, lead that into... Holy hell. Definitely intending to lead that into like an edge guard, but uh, Dolphin Slash just covers too much space. All right, that'll work. 13 kind of shaking his head, but definitely still in this game too. One Back more throw. stock away from putting Fawn into losers. I'm not sure what that fourth match was. <laughs> okay. All right, empty landing up tilt, not finding too much out of it. There we go, Back like throw. you were saying, it's an easy shield grab. All right, 13 now with another potential ledge trap, sitting once again at that ABK or heel slide distance, looking for some kind of reaction out of Fawn. Are we getting, I was about to say, is Fawn going to mix up a co Ooh, that was risky. But yeah, Fawn definitely has to mix up recovery in such a way where uh, what happened to her second stock doesn't happen again. That, oh mm. my god, what a spot dodge. Was down throw not a better option? Thirteen getting the back air, not Tension weak spot rising. though. All right, and we're just back into center stage. Thirteen making it out with only thirty-eight percent. Fawn has not been able to find any sort of meaningful okay. hit like we saw in stock one. And for these down tilts, mm, barely missing the uh, sweet spot on that. That would definitely have gone. That's it. And away she goes. Dolphin Slash in 13, taking I just out I poke it Fawn. into existence. That is definitely a... That is probably the biggest upset all day so far. That is a PR win. Yeah, going down in pools, winners, semis of all places. Well, it's not... You know, that hasn't. that's not unheard of for players like Fawn. Just because, as I always say, Xeno is just stacked. Oh, absolutely. Like, this is the... We have, like, three or four weeklies at any given week. But this is the one where people come out here to sweat. We are here to get PR points. I gotta get that bag, you see? 
Yeah, uh, 13 now sitting in winner's side of main bracket now, top 24. Very, very well done. That is, uh, getting went on fun is no easy feat. Absolutely not. Even, especially, you know, even with the fun counterpick to the Bayonetta. So, yeah, great stuff from 13. Which I'm there. guessing, like, even she's, like, putting more time into Bayo, like, as I, like, as has been the case in recent weeks, or maybe Duck Hunt's just not good into Marth. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. Like, 